Okay, here's how we do lettering, two color lettering, that is, uh, using true type fonts. Click on the lettering icon, the ribbon comes up. We are going to type in some basic text. This works, this trick works really good with true type fonts, and you'll see why here my lettering comes up on the screen. If there's any changes I need to do, this would be the time. So, of course, I'm going to um, add lock stitches to my letters and also uh, trims, why not? Watch your object manager, of course. We're working with one string of text. And at this point, let's say that we do want to make sure we have all the right settings in place, underlay, short stitches, and what have you. Now, these are true type fonts, so we can pick a preselect, you know, preset style from our gallery here. And of course you can do, you know, satin stitches or fill stitches or outline stitches or both. But the two color lettering I'm showing you here uh, is for satin on satin, which is the one most people, or it's the hardest one to get um, because, uh, you know, true type fonts can always do fill with a satin outline, but it's harder to do a satin uh, type with a satin outline. So this trick, okay, we'll show you how to do that. Basically do your first string of text and again look at the object manager there in the background. You still got your original and your one and only text so far. Now even if you choose a style from the gallery you can still further fine-tune that and, and that's what I'm about to do. I'm going to type in my usual 5.2 for density Watch your preview right here. That's what I'm looking at as I type in or add, in this case, pull compensation. Um, if I type in a zero, you can see the preview now, and I'm going to do something that I normally wouldn't do. The whole point of fixed pull compensation, that's about 10 points if you're running your system in inches. Um, if you notice here at the top left corner, I'm running my system in metrics. So my one point of fixed pull compensation, it's about 10 points if your system is running in inches. But only reason I'm going to add there is for you to check out the preview and you'll see how it's it instantly reflects what you're typing in there. About 0.3 is what I would do just because there's a satin stitch outline coming on top of it, okay, to compensate ahead of time, if you will. Uh, definitely some short stitches in there, uh, three levels, the defaults at three levels, and work pretty good. <coughs> Excuse me, and then your underlay, uh, we're definitely going to do some edge walk underlay, and uh, we're going to go ahead and say okay to that. So that's our basic setup. And we're going to zoom into that. And if there's any changes, like I said, this would be the time to do it. For instance, I see a little gap there on the two U's. Keep in mind, these are true type font conversions. It converts on the fly. That's the good thing. The downside, if you will, is that sometimes, like that right there, see those two direction lines probably too close together, causing that little gap. And usually just a little touch is all you need to make it go away. Okay? Same over here, so you click on the text and you click a second time or a third time how many times you need to get access to the notes of that letter. And again, just a little touch here on the direction line is probably all we need to regenerate the stitches. Maybe that was a tab too much, as I can see now on the top side there. So click on it again and boom, now we got it where we want it. So I'm going to go back to zoom total. So this is my first setup. N notice in the object manager we still basically have one string of text. Now, this is where the trick for the second setup, which is going to be a satin stitch outline, this is where that comes in. By the way, maybe the S there could come just a slightly over to the right to be m a little bit more centered there between the U and the A, and of course you can play with that, you know, as much as you need to. So what I'm going to do is click on the text. Once it's selected, I'll go ahead and right click and copy it. And then I'm going to paste it right on top. Now the way to do that, first, deselect your text obviously, so your ribbon there at the top goes back to the main menu. And you're going to paste in place, okay? Now it's important that you do paste in place so that it remembers 
and it comes right on top of where it was before. On the screen, doesn't look like anything happened, but if you look at your object manager here, now you can see the second string of text. Okay, what we're going to do, while we have it selected, uh, we'll go ahead and make it blue. Now, of course, it's sewing right on top. That's because it's the same satin stitch as the text underneath it. But, look at your ribbon at the top. Okay, remember, this is still true type font, and this is still, you know, regular setup. So, I'm going to go back to that window where we told it the first time to do nothing but satin stitches and this time around we're going to go to the border tab and again we can choose some of the preset styles here and let's say that one right there and if there's any further tweaking you need to do this is the screen to do it okay so I'm going to do 5.2 for my density uh, that column width is okay 1.6 but it might be a bit too much by the time we add pull compensation, so I'm going to bring it down, say, to 1.4. And uh, we probably want to have short stitches on that as well, so I'm going to say 3. As for the underlay, uh, we could do a center walk. This is going to be a satin stitch. We probably could also benefit um, from a zigzag, but if you do set up a zigzag, Make sure your margin is as close as you can to the edge. It's not going to stick out like running stitches would because zigzag, it's almost a satin underneath a satin. And my personal density usually for this stuff is 1.5. So I'm going to hit OK to that. And now it's going to change to a satin stitch. So basically that's how we do two color lettering, satin on satin. Again, that was the trick, satin on satin. If you're going to do satin outline on top of a fill, you don't even need to go through this process. You can just pick the uh, preset styles from the uh, True Type Fonts gallery. Um, now, one last thing, for some reason, that S somehow keeps looking off-center to me. So what you can do there is, let's see, we probably want to turn off the stitches. And we're going to do that from right here. And sure enough, I guess the red S is okay, but the blue keeps coming back to the left. So you click on it, not on the red, but on the blue, like right there. And the kerning now should affect the blue S. And so we're going to put it as right on top of the red one. And that should take care of it. Now, we turn the stitches back on. And if we want to preview, we can just uh, float through the design with the navigation bar. And at this point, of course, we can, you know, if we need to, we can go in and do some other changes. But this is basically the trick that I would use to do um, true type font uh, lettering, you know, satin on satin.